you, you little scamp. Do you know how much the core you took was worth? I stole it from the castle. Three years it took me to get it. And now... Silence! Stay out of it! If you die, it'll be as good as new. You brought this on yourself! From now on, I'll protect you. I'll keep you safe. Always. My name is Jin. What's yours? Laura. It seems like sending Alcos was the right choice. You all right? I've been through worse. I can handle it. Jin, I swear I'll make your dream come true. So stop putting yourself at risk. There's still time. Is that... part of your dream, too? What are we, in the end? This hunger I feel, this thirst... Is it really my own? Or is it someone else's? <sighs> Sometimes I can't tell. Tell me, Jin. Are you really here? I don't know where I really am. You're starting to sound like a human. Oh, yeah? Perhaps we're not so different after all. Humans and blades. What's the deal with this ceasefire? A tribunal, it looks like. Praetor Amalthus is here in person. And who's going to argue with the Praetor? Does he have any clue how many men we lost? If those Ardanians get away with this, architect, damn it. Quit your grumbling, mate. All this is way beyond our pay grade. You got that right. We're all just faceless cannon fodder to the bigwigs. CO says jump, we jump.
My deepest thanks to you for agreeing to this ceasefire, Queen Rakura, Emperor Nile. As I recall from the Assyrian Treaty of 350 years ago, the Praetorium was to refrain from intervention in times of war. And yet here you are intervening. But I trust you have a suitable justification, Your Eminence. Naturally. But first, to ensure impartiality in these negotiations, may I present Nira Nira, acting chairman of the Argentum Trade Guild. Furthermore, representing the Tantalese, His Highness the Crown Prince Ozyclirus Brunev Tantal will also be attending. The Crown Prince? The Prodigal Prince of Tantal? <laughs> What a spectacle. Seems the Praetor has as much clout around here as ever. Could we not just take them out here and now? Good point. All the principal nation's heads gathered here. It'd make things easy later. The way to the world tree must first be opened. Wiping out mankind is the easy part. We could manage that ourselves. Even so... That isn't our only goal, remember? We must wait for the stage to be set. Is Jin serious about this? Yeah. I've been wondering that myself. <laughs> oh, he's serious. He always is. He will annihilate mankind, and then... He will kill... The Architect. Now, it seems Mor Ardain has been accused of a unilateral breach of treaty in this matter. Emperor Nile, I open the floor to you. Is there anything you wish to say? While we are still conducting investigations into the cause, it cannot be denied that weaponry belonging to our forces was discharged against Uriah. Regardless of any possible reason and circumstance, we are prepared to offer recompense for this grave offence. So you want to settle this with money? We will provide any compensation deemed necessary. Perhaps I'm misunderstanding. To my ears, it sounds almost as if you mean to imply that the blame for these offences does not lie with your majesty at all. We are investigating. I ask that we not draw any hasty conclusions. What need is there for investigation? I believe a cause has already been established. There are witnesses. And that would be? What a preposterous notion. The people you speak of are merely a terrorist group. How could they possibly command that measure of... It's the truth. I, Ozyclirus, swear this in the name of King Eulogimenos Tantal. Can confirm ex-Chairman Banner give these people some kind of supplies. 
military supplies, methinks, and in great number, yes. But why would... What if I were to tell you that the Aegis Malus, who raised the world five centuries ago, was involved? Ridiculous. Everyone knows he disappeared in a blaze of flame. He's very much alive, believe me. That arsehole, I mean, the Aegis has confronted us in person. And if my word is not enough for you... A blade? But... but that core crystal... <gasps> this is another Aegis, named Mithra. Your Highness has heard of her, surely. So the rumors that reached us were true. Who is its driver? If you knew that, I dare say your surprise would be even greater. But that is not the matter we are here to discuss, Your Highness. This is a dire situation. Six o'clock already. Mithra's been in there for a long time now. We've just got to trust them. They're dealing with the leaders of whole nations. It's not like there's anything you or me can do to help. Ugh. <sighs> I've noticed something about Malos. He's an Aegis, but you wouldn't know it from how he's fighting. I think... I'm pretty sure he's damaged in some way. You mean he can't use the full extent of his powers? The wounds I dealt in our battle long ago may not be completely healed. His end goal is Elysium. He wants to go back to the place he was born. There he can heal until his powers have recovered. If Malos is allowed to restore himself? The horrors of five centuries past will return. Or worse still, Malos's goal is simple. He means to destroy humanity in its entirety. Why would anyone desire that? Perhaps he doesn't even need a reason. It seems to be a deep-seated drive. An instinct. As natural as breathing. All of this is my responsibility. Praetor Amalthus? Whatever do you mean? It was none other than I who awakened Malos and unleashed him upon the world. So, your eminence, the rumor that you were once Malos's driver is... I never intended to obscure the truth. It is writ plain for all to see in history books. I was a fool. It was to prevent such foolishness that all passage to the World Tree was forbidden after the Aegis War. However, it has become apparent that the laws of men do not apply to Malos. <sighs> the time may have come to lift that restriction. I appreciate this. Don't think you've earned my trust. But since Rex is going to Elysium, their paths are bound to cross. That's all. I'm surprised. You seem so devoted to the boy. It's for both our sakes. But you, Amalthus, who is it that you're living for?
I guess they did call her a goddess. The state funeral makes sense. Shouldn't you be with him? He's a boy. Best not to bother them at times like this. <laughs> I expected you'd be more clingy. You really are different from him. Actually, letting him be was more her idea than mine. Really? Pirates? Get out. So wait. You're saying you want to go be clingy, or what? I'll burn you. I can't, I can't. Sheesh. It's weird, though. What is? I mean, don't you think it's odd? Normally, if a blade or its driver dies, it'll just go back to being a core crystal. So why is Fan just dead? I did wonder the same thing. There's only one way I know for a dead blade to keep its physical form. Remember Minna? I mean Cole. He was a flesh eater. Yeah. But Fan wasn't a flesh eater. I can say that for sure. What's that? That's the shape of Fan's core crystal. Well, how it used to be. But now it's a triangle. Rex and I are quite a unique case, but this is different still. How is it different? If a blade shares its core with another, its shape changes in a uniform fashion. In our case, the center part went to Rex, and the outer part to us. I don't know why that is, but it seems to be a rule. But fans isn't like that. Exactly. It looks more like someone stole her core, doesn't it?
My apologies. Did I keep you waiting? No, not really. What were you doing? I was cleansing the core crystals. It markedly increases their resonance success rate. Bonding with the crystal carries certain risks, you understand. I know. When I became the driver of an Aegis, this power was awakened in me. So I might be able to do it too? Who knows? Different people are cut out for different things. Right, yeah. Now then, my work is done for the day. Come with me. A special envoy? To Tantal? Me? Correct. Behold. As a salvager, I imagine you are already aware, but this is Allrest, the world we currently inhabit. We make our home on Titans, moving in circles around the world tree. And here lies the Great Void. This void came into being 500 years ago. It did not exist prior to that. So I've heard. It's in our way anyway. It stopped us reaching the world tree. The Great Void is carved from the Cloud Sea by a monstrous beast known as Ophion. Wait, you mean that thing? To be precise, it is an artifice, a servant of the Aegis. Of Mithra? So if that thing is Mithra's, then what did it attack us for? Doesn't make sense. Ophion was felled in the ancient battle with Malos, sinking below the clouds. This means someone must have revived it. Correct. And you're saying that someone was Zeke's home country, Tantal? Yes. They gave Ophion one directive. To ensure that none approach the World Tree. They sought to prevent a repeat of the horrors of the Aegis War. So, an obstacle was created. The Great Void. How did they manage a feat like that? As I've said, mankind is regressing. Only one artifact remains that can rescind Ophion's orders, and it lies in Tantal. It's called the Omega Feta, and it's guarded by the royal family. I'll take you to it. I've prepared your envoy documents already. Your quest is to set foot in Elysium, correct? Malos and his ilk will surely seek the Omega Feta for themselves. I would ask you to reach Elysium before they do and inform me of what you find there. Do it as a favor for a once foolish old man and so that people may have a future in this dying world.
We can reach Tantal by ship, but once we're there, we'll need to do a spot of walking. So we're travelling with Shell, lad, yeah? Never thought I'd see the day. I think you'll find I make a fantastic ally. Mm, luck of Zeke, not so great. Bet we shipwrecked by tomorrow. <laughs> Cheeky furball. We're all gonna die. Hey, Zeke, you said before that Torna concerned you too. What did you mean by that? What? Oh, yeah, that. I don't know about those clowns, but Torna, the country that fell 500 years ago, they were the ancestors of us Tantalese. The people of Tantal are descended from Adam, the hero of Torna who escaped its destruction. So, after Pyra fell asleep, Adam escaped to Tantal. That's right. That is the first I've heard of it. I have studied much history, but this story never featured. Most peculiar. We're humble. Don't really like to brag about it. The only real trace left is in this here sigil of the royal family. So why did you awaken Hayes? Because her power was of great use to me. Indol has found itself under attack from Torna a number of times. She was necessary in driving them back. Really? Then why don't you seem to have any others? Blades, that is. <laughs> Driver though I may be, I am no fighter. Besides, I find the warrior monks here so reliable. They get the job done. <laughs> if you say so. I wonder, do you know why Torna are using the name of a dead country? Jin was a blade of Torna once. Loyalty or nostalgia? Who can say? Perhaps both. Is that really all there is to it? You don't think so? I don't know much about what happened while I slept. There are no written records, either. All we have is stories passed down. And you think that is insufficient? History is a murky thing. Only those present can truly know what took place. But weren't you one of those present? And that is why I offer you my cooperation. I guess we'll find out if we go to Tantal. <laughs>